The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar, Tax Act Professional Reports. How to quickly access the e-file information you need. And we're also going to be covering um, the e-file steps in the Tax Act Professional Editions. My name is Jesse Dolmage, and I'm from the marketing department in the Tax Act Professional side of the house. And then with us today is Tracy Hoop, who is the product manager of the professional software um, at TaxAct Professional. So today we have um, an overview and a demonstration of our e-file steps in the software, as I mentioned, as well as the e-filing reports that we have in our software and in your account. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to enter those in the questions or the chat section of your toolbar, and we'll try and answer as many of those as possible at the end of the presentation. So without further ado, um, Tracy Hoop will now do the demonstration and walk you through the, the e-file step. Thanks, Jesse. Um, so just to cover the agenda for today's webinar real quickly, we are going to go through the e-file steps in the Tax Act 2016 Professional Edition. We will be going over our professional reports, how you access, what data and filters are available, and um, FA, or FYIs for practices with multiple pairs, and then we will take questions at the end. All right, so let me go ahead and start up the software. And I do want to put out the caveat that I am using our test environment, so there might be some quirky things or some, some slow load time that we wouldn't see in um, our production servers just because of the environment I'm in. They do not like me messing with um, e-file data in production, as you might imagine. So we are doing this demo in our test environment today. Hold on. Okay. All right, so what you're looking at right now is our client manager where you can see all of the clients that I have in this practice. The account that I signed into is the practice owner account, so they're seeing everything. You can see that I have preparers listed in this column right here. And then next to it, we have an e-file status column. And that was new um, in our, our last release. Um, and it's an, an optional column that you can add if you're interested. It just gives you a quick, high-level overview of what your client's federal e-file status is if you don't want to get the, the details by going into Pro Reports. So let me just show you real quick on how you add that column if you want that displayed, if you're not familiar. So you would go to the Prepare menu and go to Preferences. And then here you'll see there is um, a little pick list for columns not displaying. You would find that column in this list and then pick it and click the Add button to move it to the columns displaying. And then you select it in that list if you want to move it up in location to where it is relative to the other columns. So we'll just move that back to where it was. And then you just hit OK to save that. And what you'll see here, I do have one client that we have not e-filed yet. So as you might expect, there is nothing displaying in that column. Um, once that return is e-filed, it would be updated to show what the status is. So I'm going to go ahead and go into a return and walk through the e-file steps just real quickly. So mine is defaulting to opening a return in form view. And I'm just going to go ahead and click e-file and hit the Submit Electronic Filing Return. And then you'll get the option on whether you want to file electronically or mail a paper return. 
and then you'll get to select whether you want to file the federal or any states that might be attached to that return. I'm just going to pick federal for right now. And this is one of the uh, slow points in our, our test environment. It's usually much faster. So there are a few places where we'll see that just because of what I'm using for the demo. All right, so this is the first optional screen um, where we offer audit assistance through Protection Plus, and it's an optional service that you can um, add for your clients, and it gives them audit protection and identity theft restoration services should they need that. There's also um, several benefits um, to you as the preparer. Um, for more information, you can go to our website or click on any of the links here on the screen. You do need to register with Protection Plus in order to add this product to your client return, but it's a very easy, fast process. Um, in fact, the, the process changed this year so that you can register as part of your software. So if I'm already registered in this example, but if I wasn't, I would see a screen where I could check a box to, um, to register and then I can continue and add the client service right from there without having to go through um, any other website registration form. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that box checked and continue. And then one of the things that's required if you opt in is you do have to print the agreement. So you'll have to go ahead and click that. I have it printing to PDF just so that I'm not spitting out a bunch of paper right now. But once you print that, you'll be able to continue in the e-file process. And this is just the, the e-filing topic screen. Since I've already gone through a lot of these um, with this return, I'm not taking through them directly, but I'm going to go ahead and review them so you can see what those screens are like. So one of the items that you'll have to do is pick a PIN as the signature for your return. And then you'll have to enter one of these options for the electronic signature for the taxpayer. So we imported the last year's AGI, so that's there. And then there are several options for um, refunds. If your client is receiving a refund, we do offer different options with Republic and River City Bank. Um, you can click Review Bank Options if you want to see those. These screens take a while to load, but um, we can kind of speak to them as that's going. So as a reminder, if you used Republic Bank last year and you're also using them this year, Remember to enter in this year's new ARBIN number um, in your master information so that um, otherwise your returns, um, will, your clients' um, returns won't get to Republic Bank because they need this year's ARBIN. That changes every year. So make sure you enter that in your master information this year. So these are the options that you have with Republic Bank. And, you know, we, prepaid card, direct deposit, check, Walmart direct to cash, um, and then there's the two easy advance options, which do end, as you can see there in the footnote, February 28th. So you can only offer the refund advance options until that date. Um, the other options at the top there, the four first ones, those are available all season long. And there's more information on these programs on our website if you're interested in those. Um, this particular return or practice that I have set up is actually enrolled in River City Bank, so I'll go ahead and show those options and we'll go down that path. So these are the options with River City. They also have a prepaid card um, and then you can do the refund transfer, the check, or the Walmart direct to cash. So if you choose the prepaid card, you'll receive a stack of cards that you would hand out to your clients. Um, there is a number on the card that's visible through the envelope window that you would enter here so that we can tie that card to this 
client. And then we ask that you verify the information, enter the client's email address for notification, and then you have to verify their identity. I believe this one's a state ID. And then you get to your fees page where it's pulling in the first two amounts based off of your invoice that you've set up. The River City Bank fee is $44.95. Protection Plus is a base of $44.99. However, you can mark that up up to $94.99 if you want. And then there's a transmitter fee that Tax Act gets for the bank products of $6.99. And then because of the bank enrollment, you'll have to print that application as well. And we'll just continue on there. All right, and then the next step is to print returns and e-file documents. So from here, you can opt what exactly you want to print. Um, it defaults to e-filing instructions and the return. However, if you want more options, there's a link to access the Print Center where you can select you know, from all the different options that you have for this return, including you can opt to mask private data if you want to print out um, a version that you want to give to your client. There's also a way to select your state information and select reports that you might want to print with the return. And then you would obviously select uh, the print button here to print those, but we're going to just continue. One of the other optional items is for e-file notification. So if you want to be notified with updates on your client's return, um, it is pulling in the email address that you enter in your preparer information by default. You can also opt to add a cell phone number if you would like. And then mis miscellaneous information just has, you know, whatever else we might need to ask for this return. So this is just if you want to have your return sent in care of someone else, you would enter that information here. So that's it for e-file topics. As you can see, these last three are optional. There are defaults that once you set them up um, in your prepare information, it would just default to those options. You wouldn't have to go through and select everything every time. It would just remember those. So really the only two that you have to go through are the self-select pin and refund method options. And then the next step it'll go through is asking you if you want to, um, I think there's the signature screen here. Yep, so you would ask your client what they want for their PIN. And once you enter that, you'll be able to continue to the alerts, and verifying their information, which we already had from the bank information. All right, so then it did uh, a quick review, and there was nothing that it saw that would cause any, you know, errors that we could tell. So um, if you did have something that was missing or there was some kind of information that might be beneficial to your client that we would need to point out, you would get a notifi notification at this step. And then that's it. You are able to submit your return or you can hit submit later if you want to do a batch of returns at once or cancel if you don't want to go any further with this return at this time. So we'll go ahead and cancel. And once you submit, you'll see a confirmation screen that the, the e-files were actually submitted to Tax Act. Um, so wait for that screen um, and if you have, you know, try not to stop the process. Um, you know, if you see it spinning, let it finish. Yeah, it's usually pretty quick. Um, it's real-time status in, in almost all cases, so you should see something pop up pretty quickly. You don't have to stay on that screen if you don't want to once it's done processing. If you, if you don't get an app, you know, an instant um, status. So I did not continue to file that. That one was a rejected one, but had I submitted, we should see an update on that status right there. All right, so 
The next thing I wanted to show was professional reports, which is the next tab in your software. And what you'll want to do is hit this little green arrow button that's a refresh to load it. And I should also point out there are two ways to access professional reports. You can get through this tab in your software. You can also get to it online through your account and practice manager by signing in with your username and password. And then there is a pro reports or professional reports tile that you can click on to get this same view. Um, one thing we did add for this year since professional reports was new last year, we added a drop down for the tax year. So it'll default to 2016 since that's the tax year that we're currently filing for. However, if you had 2015 returns last year or you, you're filing, filing some for this year, you can select that option to view those returns just in the same way. Now, I don't have any returns for 2015 for this demo account, so it's not showing anything. So we'll go ahead and look at 2016. And the default um, screen that we see here is the dashboard, which is just a very high level overview of your practice. Um, it has the e-files over time and the total e-files and then a breakdown by the e-files per EFIN. You also have a link to the user guide for this report on the screen. No, oh, right here. Yep. The next one is an e-file summary. And you'll see a lot of the information is the same information just presented in different ways to give you a different view of what's happening in your practice. So this one breaks it down by time, and you can select between daily, weekly, or monthly. And then it breaks it down in this chart below by EFIN, and you can see the number of PTINs per EFIN, the number of e-files per EFIN, and then accepted and federal, state, and settlement types. And I should mention, you can drill down into any of these by just clicking on the data points, and it'll pull up the related information. So this is just a quick look at your, the preparers in your practice, and specifically how many they are filing, how many are accepted, how many are federal, state, and the settlement. So this is the, the bread and butter of this dashboard report. This is the e-files. This is all the detailed information for the client returns that you're filing. And you'll see if you had a state return along with the federal, it's broken out on a separate line. So you can see for this one, Carter Jones, we had a federal return and an Iowa 1040 return. So it's each of them on a, a separate line. And then you can click on it to view more detailed information about that return. Now, I should say, because we're in the test environment, you'll see a lot of pending and awaiting acceptance. That's only because of the environment we're in. You should, at this point, since the IRS is open and processing returns, there should be very few times that you see awaiting acceptance. Um, that is more for before the IRS is actually processing returns if we're kind of waiting on those. So if you have a return that was rejected, you can also click on here to see more detailed information about why it was rejected and what you can do to resubmit. Oh, and I should point out back on this page, there's filters at the top that you can select to see, you know, just narrow down the view of what you're looking at. So if you want to see just the returns that a certain preparer had filed, you can select that and it'll filter the information. Um, you can even filter by date. Now, I don't have a wide range of dates in here for this demo, but you could do that if you're, you know, halfway through the season, you want to just look at the past week. You can also break it down by EFIN, by return type, and settlement type. There's also a settlement report that you can look at to see where each of your client returns is, is falling, whether they're balance due, checks, direct deposit, prepaid, or none. 
And then there's e-files by status. You can see a quick view of how many are in each status type. So, and then like I said, a lot of the, the information in here you can click on to pull up um, the more detailed information. So you can look at it and then if you want, click in to get more information. And then the last report that we have is the e-file billing summary. And this is, first off, a breakdown of if you're paying per return, each charge that you've paid should appear here. Um, also, if you have a prepaid e-filing balance, so if you are paying per return, you can either purchase um, certain packages of products come with a certain amount of prepaid returns, or you can always call in and add to your balance um, so you don't have to have a separate charge for the e-file the e fee with each return. This particular account doesn't have a balance, but if you did, you would see that here. Um, the last section of this return is if you have a practice that has unlimited e-filing as part of their bundle purchase, you would see which form types are included for unlimited e-filing. So the green check mark shows that I have unlimited e-filing for those products. All right, the last thing that I wanted to show was the difference for um, what the practice owner can view compared to if I am a preparer in that practice. So I'm going to go ahead and close out and sign back in as a preparer that's in that practice. All right, so as you can see, the practice owner had the permission set for this preparer so that they can only view their returns. So they only see the two returns that are signed to them. And they also only see those returns in the professional reports. So it's a much narrow view of what's available. And the reason it has three here is because there was an Iowa return, so it counts that as a separate line item, even though it only shows two lines in Client Manager. So I just want to point that out. Um, the other thing to point out is there are two reports that the practice uh, owner sees that the preparers in the practice don't see in professional reports. Um, that includes the preparer summary and the settlement report, but they they do see everything else. It's just relative to their clients and their returns, not the entire practice's clients. The only exception that I do want to point out is the e-file billing summary. If, if there are charges, those are shown here. They cannot, however, click into those to view the details on the, the client's return. They just see basically what's here and that there's been a charge. So I think that's it. That's all I had to show for the e-filing steps and professional reports. So, so there were thanks, Tracy. There were some questions. Um, so one of them was, how can I print um, the information from the pro report if I wanted to print a status of all my client returns? A status of all the returns. Yeah, so on the e-file details, the Excel. Yes. Yes, so there is an option to export your information to Excel by clicking here, and then you're able to use that in any way that you need to. The second question was, if I want to give other preparers in my practice the option to view all clients' e-file statuses. Can I do that? Um, I don't believe at this time they would be able to do that. Okay. The only way that you would see it in here is if you were the assigned preparer in the client manager. Okay. 
but that's something that if we if we hear from from customers that that's something that they're looking for, we can certainly um, look to add that for for future deployments. Let's see. The another question was. So you mentioned um, that people can also access this information in my account mm -hmm. uh, or in their account, CASPAC accounts, which is also, we also refer to it as practice manager. Um, all the information, um, they were asking what the differences were. So all the information is the same. The benefits of being able to access from your CASPAC account is that all you need is an internet connection. You don't have to have the software installed on whatever device it is that you're accessing that information from. So for example, if you are meeting with a client at their house and you save your data locally, um, you can just, you know, go to any web browser on your on your phone or your tablet or laptop and then sign in to see into your Tax Act account and look up that client's um, e file status in professional reports as Tracy is showing here. So I signed in as the practice owner again, so that's why I'm seeing all of the activity. But yeah, it's it's the exact same view, um, same information, just a, a different way to get to it. Um, I did forget to mention at the beginning of this webinar that this is actually one webinar that was covering two webinars that were previously scheduled. Um, and we, we are sorry about that. Um, I know some of you um, emailed us about uh, the scheduling of these because there was some confusion with that, and we apologize. But essentially, we decided to take the two webinars and combine the information. It was so, um, the information was so closely related, and at this point in the season, we want to make sure you guys are, um, we're using your time as efficiently as possible, and so we, decided to condense two webinars into one. Um, we hope that is <laughs> that was useful even though it was somewhat of an inconvenience. So thank you for, for understanding. Uh, I think that was all the questions. Do you have anything else, Tracy? I don't have anything else. Okay. Well, thank you for joining the webinar today. If you have any questions, um, feel free to go to our support site. Um, or give us a call, drop us an email, and let us know. Again, that user guide for the professional reports is available within professional reports on that initial screen, or you can get to it at taxactprofessional.com backslash support. Um, and then there's a, we'll feature a link there to that user guide. Thanks again, and good luck with the next few weeks um, and months, and we look forward to you joining us for another webinar.